Attorney Kratz, state will call Sherry Colhane to the stand. May we approach judge just briefly? The court, yes. The clerk, if you would raise your right hand. Sherry Colhane called as a witness herein, having first duly sworn was examined and testified as follows. The clerk, please be seated. Please state your name. Spell your last name for the record. The witness, Sherry Colhane, C-U-L-H-A-N-E. Direct examination by attorney Kratz. Question, Ms. Colhane, how are you employed? Answer, I work for the Wisconsin State Crime Laboratory as a DNA analyst in the DNA section. Question. In front of you is a document which is marked as plaintiff, Plaintiff's Exhibit Number 11. Would you tell us what that is? Answer. Yes, it's a copy of my curriculum vitae. Question. Does that cur curriculum vitae include your current position, the duties with the crime lab, your prior education, training, experience that entitles you to hold the position of DNA analyst? Answer, yes. Attorney Kratz, move admission of Exhibit 11 and ask she be considered an expert, at least in that particular field. The court, any objection from the defense? Attorney Johnson, no. Nope. The court, the exhibit is admitted. The court will accept the witness as an expert. Question by Attorney Kratz, Ms. Colhane. You have been asked to participate in the investigation regarding DNA analysis of samples regarding the case involving Mr. Avery and Ms. Halbach. Is that correct? Answer, yes, it is. Question, as part of that investigative process, did you have occasion to individually search and recover items from a 1999 RAV4 SUV in Madison? Answer. Yes, I did. Question. In searching the back of that vehicle, were you able to observe and did you collect various material, various stains that you believed included human blood? Answer. Yes, I did. Question. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as plaintiff's exhibit number 12. Excuse me. Could you tell us what that is, please? Answer. This is the back cargo area of that vehicle, and I recovered a portion of a large reddish brown stain that was where that yellow area is. Question, all right. That stain recovery, is that something that you do as a member of the crime lab, as a DNA analyst? Answer, yes, it is. Question, were you also asked to examine and did you recover a reddish stain that was located near the ignition portion of the front of that same SUV? Answer, yes, I did. Question, and could you look at what's been marked as exhibit number 13 and tell us what, if anything, that depicts? Answer, this is a photograph of the inside of the RAV4 and that squiggly, the court, excuse me, there's a laser pointer floating around. Attorney Kratz, I have got it, the yellow button. Answer. Thank you. This area right here is where I recovered a portion of this reddish brown stain. Question, Ms. Colhane, did you also receive an evidence and were you asked to process and identify whether any DNA material was located on a vehicle key, which has been to, referred to as a Toyota key? Answer, yes, I was. Question, by the way, once receiving that key at the crime lab, did you do anything with the key and test it as it might relate to this particular 1999 RAV4? Answer, yes, I did. Question, what did you do? Answer, I placed it in the ignition and turned it. The key turned the ignition and I also tested it on the locked front driver's side door and it did open the door. Question. And so the court is aware what key we are talking about. Is this the same key at least identified 
and identified in the evidence package as having been collected from the bedroom of Stephen Avery? Answer, correct. Question, Ms. Colhane, the key itself, did you process that for the recovery of possible DNA material? Answer, yes, I did. Question, can you tell us what that entails, please? Answer, I basically took a sterile cotton swab and swab the black rubberized portion of the key that you use that you would use to crank the key. I swabbed all the surfaces and I did my analysis from that cotton, cotton swab. Question. Miss Colhane, the analysis of this vehicle, where did that take place at? Answer. At the Wisconsin State Crime Lab in Madison. Question. All right. We're going to be showing you what's been marked for identification as exhibits number 14 and 15. And as you testify about your analysis, I would invite you to refer to those exhibits and tell us if, if you need to read from them. But let me ask you, if you were able to develop what's commonly referred to as a DNA profile from the blood stain that was obtained from the back of the RAV4 SUV? Answer, yes, I was. Question, were you able to identify and develop a profile of any DNA material that was found on the Toyota key that we have heard about? <clears throat> Answer, yes, I did. Question, Ms. Colhane, have you received from law enforcement officials what are commonly referred to as exemplars? or sometimes intimate samples that are referred to from both Mr. Avery and that of Teresa Halbach? Answer, yes, I have. Question, and were you able specifically from a buccal swab saliva sample of Mr. Avery to develop a DNA profile? Answer, yes, I was. Question, and specifically from a slide, a pap smear of the victim in this case, Teresa Halbach, were you able to develop a DNA profile? Answer, yes, I was. Question, did you also, Ms. Colhane, receive from the crime lab various bone and tissue material which was represented to you as having been collected from a burn area on the Avery property? Answer, yes, I was. Question, did you attempt to develop a DNA profile from those charred remains of bone and tissue? Answer, yes. Question, referring then first to exhibit number 14, the court. Just a minute, did she say she tried? What was the attorney cracks? She said she did judge, I'm sorry, the court. You were able to read the DNA from the charred remains, is that what you said? The witness, yes. Question by attorney Kratz. Ms. Colhane, then, regarding the profiling or regarding the analysis that you performed, were you able to compare the DNA profile from the key found in Mr. Avery's bedroom from the blood found near the ignition inside of Ms. Halbach's vehicle and compare that with Mr. Avery's DNA exemplar? Answer, yes, I was. Question. What were the results of that analysis? Answer, the profile developed from the buccal swabs that were taken from Stephen Avery were consistent with the DNA profile that I developed from both the Toyota key and the apparent blood stains that were taken from the ignition. Question, were you able to develop and compare the DNA profiles from the blood found in the back of the RAV4 and compare that with the DNA profile, the pap smear from Teresa Halbach. <clears throat> Answer, yes, I was. Question, what were those results? Answer, the profile from the pap smear was also consistent with the stain from the back cargo area of the RAV4. Question, and so the court is clear. There was also a soda can that was found in the front of Teresa's vehicle that you developed a DNA profile from, is that right? Answer, yes. Question, and what, if anything, did that match? Or what was that consistent with? Answer, 
That was also consistent with the profile developed from the pap smear of Teresa Halbach. Question, and finally, Ms. Colhane, were you able to compare the DNA profile from the pap smear of Teresa Halbach and compare those to the charred tissue and charred remains found on the Avery property? Answer, yes, I was. Question, question. Could you describe the results for us, please? Answer, the profile. The DNA profile from the charred remains was a partial profile, and mainly because that was a very degraded sample of DNA. That partial profile was consistent with the profile developed from the pap smear of Teresa Halbach. Question, were you able, Ms. Colhane, to speak as to st statistics or frequency of occurrence, that is, between the partial profile and the known or exemplar sample of Ms. Halbach? Answer, yes, I am. Question, could you describe how that analysis occurs and what, if any, statistical data you can provide in that regard? Answer, when we do this type of DNA analysis, we're looking at several different locations on the DNA molecule. The more locations, the more areas of the DNA we test, the more discriminating and the more specific that profile becomes. Because the profile from the charred remains was a partial profile, it was only, it matched the pap smear sample at seven different locations. Statistically, if we look at how rare this profile occurs in the population, we can st statistically look at all those different areas. And combining those, we come up with a composite statistic that characterizes this sample and how rare it is in the population. In the case of the partial profile from the charred remains, it occurs one person in one billion in the Caucasian population. I have to refer to the exact numbers. One person in two billion in the African American and Southeastern Hispanic populations, and one person in three billion in the Southwestern Hispanic population. Question, and at least for our purposes, regarding whether or not those charred remains are in fact those of Teresa Halbach, is it a fair statement then, with the analysis that you have provided to indicate that the chances, if you will, that it is not Teresa Halbach would be one in one billion? Is that roughly a restatement of what you are telling us? Answer, basically, it just means that this profile occurs in the general Caucasian population, one person out of a billion, and it is consistent with Teresa. Question. So the seven out of seven loci, in other words, the DNA analysis, at least if the frequency of one in one billion, matched between that of Teresa Halbach and that of the charred remains, is that correct? Answer, that's correct. Attorney Kratz, that's all I have of this witness, Judge. Thank you. The court, Mr. Johnson, Attorney Johnson, thank you. Cross-examination by Attorney Johnson. When did this car arrive at the crime lab? Answer, I got involved in it on November 7th. Question, do you know? Answer, 2005. Question, I'm sorry, 2005, is that what you said? Answer, yep. Question, okay. When did it arrive to your knowledge? Answer, I believe it arrived the day before, on a Sunday. Question. Okay. And then you didn't have anything to do with it until that day? Answer. Correct. Question. And where was it when you first saw it? <clears throat> Answer. It was in the garage of our laboratory. Question. Okay. And it was parked there? Was it in a van? How was it? Answer. No. It was parked in the garage and it was being photographed by the photographer in the laboratory. Question, okay, who else was there? Answer, myself, Mike Riddle, who is another analyst in the lab, 
Nick Stalky, and Ron Graffy. Question. And those are other crime lab personnel? Answer. Yes. Question. Okay. Were any of those people people who had been on the scene when the car was recovered? Answer. I don't recall if, they're, if they were there or not. Question. Okay. And was the car, were the doors open and the hatch open? Answer. Yes, I believe so. Question. Okay. And they were taking photographs, is that right? Answer. Yes. Question. And were they processing the vehicle otherwise? Were they looking like for fingerprints, doing things like that? Answer. Usually when we process a vehicle like this, like this, as a DNA analyst, I look at it first for any biological material. In this case, I was interested in any blood stains, apparent blood stains, that I might find. So I was involved in the beginning. The car is photographed first, then I was involved in looking for blood stains, apparent blood stains. And after I was completed with my portion of it, then it would have been processed for fingerprints. Okay, so the car is there. There are a number of people around it. Are the doors open and things like that? Answer, yes. Question, okay. And so someone had done that prior to your arrival? Answer, as far as I recall, yes. Question, okay, and so you get there, and what do you have with you? Answer, pardon me? Question, what do you have with you? I mean, what materials do you have? Answer, I have the supplies that I use to process the car, cotton swabs, chemicals that I use to look for presumptive tests for blood, my notes, that sort of thing, and I begin flashlight by actually visually looking at the car to see if there is any blood stains. <clears throat> Question, okay, and how are you dressed? Answer, I have a lab coat on. Question, okay. Answer, I don't remember what else. Question, okay. And you have, answer, gloves, lab coat, gloves, yup. Question, okay, anything covering your mouth or anything like that? Answer, not my mouth, but I had safety goggles, glasses. Question, okay. And so what's the first thing you do? Court reporter asked to have the question repeated. Question, I'm sorry, what's the first thing you do in relation to this car? The court, just a second, Mr. Kratz. Can you turn off the photo machine? It will make life easier for the reporter. Answer, the first thing I do is begin to take notes. I verify that the car that's in the garage is the car that I'm actually supposed to be looking at. I write down the VIN number, what type of car it is, and then I begin basically by, with a flashlight, looking on the inside of the car. As I come across stains that appear to be consistent with blood stains, I diagram and note where those stains are. I collect those stains by using a sterile cotton swab that's in dipped in sterile water, and I swab the area. In some cases, those are photographed. Not all stains from every car is photographed, and I basically write my notes as I go along. Question, okay, now do you speak to anybody before you start this process? Answer, I'm usually, I have usually been told what case it is, some of the background on the case. In this particular case, I was told by one of the supervisors what kind of case this was where this car was found, and what we were interested in looking at. Question, okay, so you knew. You knew some background about the case, where the car was found. You knew it was the victim's car? Answer, correct. Question, and you knew that, that, that it was potentially, you would expect to find blood stains there? Answer, correct and other potential DNA material? Answer, correct. Question, and that's all before you go out and start
processing the car? Answer, yes. Question, okay. So then, does anybody point out like different possibilities about what stains you might want to look at? Or do you just do that yourself? Answer, actually in this case, Nick Stalky, who is another analyst, he's a blood spatter analyst as well as a document analyst. We were sort of doing it in conjunction and we were kind of looking at the stains together. Question, okay. And so you, you do you recall which stain you looked at first? Answer, yes, the first one was the one in the back cargo area because it was the largest and the most obvious. Question, how big an area was that stain? Answer, I didn't measure it exactly. That was the photograph you were shown earlier. I would guess about that big. Question, are you holding your hands? Answer, about six inches across. Question, about six inches. Would you say, answer, approximately. Question, would you say six inches around? I mean, like sort of a circular type of stain? Answer, yes. Question, and what do you do to process that stain? Answer, we do a test that is a presumptive test for blood. It is not specific for human blood, but we use it as a screening tool. It's a question, what test is that? Answer, it's phenolphthalein. Question, okay. Answer, it is a color test. If you, if it's probably blood, you get a bright pink color. Question, okay. Answer, so I did that on the stain. It appeared to be that it was consistent with a possible blood stain. So I collected that one. Question, okay. And then to collect it, what do you do? Answer, I took a sterile cotton swab, wet it with sterile water and just basically wiped it over the surface until I had enough on a cotton swab that I felt I could get a DNA profile from. Question, okay. And is that cotton swab, the tip of it, like saturated then, or just a small amount of the bright pink on it? Or answer, I use a different swab. I use the swab, a swab for the phenolphthalein to test that. Then I throw that away. Then I take another swab to actually take my sample for DNA extraction. Question, okay, you throw that away? Where do you throw that away? Answer, into a biohazard box. Question, and then what do you do? Then you take a different cotton swab and you swab the stain? Answer, correct. Question, then what do you do with that swab? Answer, I allow it to air dry and then I put it into a paper coin envelope and I mark on the outside the item designation, the laboratory number. Any evidence or any case that's opened into the laboratory has a unique number and we use that number to identify everything associated with that case. So I put the lab number on it. It was item A and it was the first stain that I collected, so it was A1. Question, okay, and you allow it to air dry, how long does that take? Answer, it wasn't very wet. I probably, what I have is a rack in this, the cotton swabs, as I collect the stains, are put into this rack and they are left there until I'm completed. Then I put them all into an envelope, question. And how big is this rack, a foot long? Answer, no, not a foot long, not, a, not that long. Question, six inches? Answer, yeah. Question, okay, so like square, six by six? Answer, yeah. Question, how many different cotton swabs can fit in there? Answer, I usually put about three, then I use another one. Question, and then you put those where? Is there like a table or something there you put them on? Answer, yes, it's an area that I designated as my work surface. 
It has paper down and it has all the tools, the forceps and everything that I use for examination. Question. Okay, and that little holder stand sits on that table? Answer. Correct. Question. And um, so you take the cotton swab, put it in the stand, you go on to the next stain, then at that point. Answer. Correct. Question. What do you do with that stain? The next stain. Same process? Answer. Same process. Correct. Question. Okay. Answer. Yes. Question. Okay. Is it the same thing with the blood test first? The presumptive blood test first? Answer. Yes. And then that's discarded into a biohazard box and then I take my actual sample. Question. Where is the biohazard box? Is that also on that little table, the work table? Answer. It's in a, it's a box on the floor. It's a big biohazard box right by where I am. Question. Is it like covered or? Answer. What do you mean by cut? No, it's open. Question. It's just an open box? Answer. An open box, yeah. Question. Okay. You're sort of pitching stuff into. Answer. Correct. Question. Okay. Do you remember which stain you went to next? Answer. Yes, I do. I did not. I believe there were a total of 10 stains that were I actually swabbed and collected. I only did DNA on four of them. The next stain was on the cargo area, the back cargo area of the car. There's a little plastic strip that you get into the car. I don't know exactly what it's called, but that was the second stain that I took. Question. That's sort of like the, the rear of the car where the sort of carpeting ends and there's sort of a little plastic area there. Answer. That's correct. Question. Right where the hatchback opens. Answer. Correct. Question. Okay. And that's, that's the stain you did next. Answer. Yes. Question. Okay. How do you get access to the stain in the interior of the cargo portion? Did you go through the door or how did you get to that? No. Answer. No. I just leaned in. Leaned over. Question. You leaned over. Okay. How big of a lean is that? Answer. I don't recall. Maybe a few feet. Question. Okay. Answer. Just to reach. I could comfortably reach it. Question. Are you touching anything else when you are doing that? Answer. No. Question. Okay. So then this strip, you do the, that one next. How big is that stain? Answer. I don't recall. I would have to look at my notes to see exactly. Question. Okay. You would refresh your recollection by looking at your notes? Answer. Yes. Question. Okay. The court. I'm going to interpose my own objection here. Is this one of the ones you analyzed? The witness. No. The court. For purposes of this hearing, I don't believe it's relevant. Question by Attorney Johnson. Okay, so this is not one of the stains you analyzed for DNA? Answer. That is correct. Question. Okay. Why don't we go to the next stain you analyzed for DNA? Answer. Okay. Question. Where was that? Answer. There was a stain on the driver's seat. It was actually in the fabric of the seat. I cut that out. Question. Okay. Using what? Answer, a pair of scissors. Okay, where did the scissors come from? Answer, in the laboratory, my work scissors. Question, are they from that same work area? Answer, yes. Yes, all the tools that I use for my processing and examination are all in the same area. Question, okay, that's that little table where the little stand for the swab is sitting? Answer. Correct. Question. And how big is that table again? Answer. I don't recall exactly. Pro probably maybe three feet by two feet. Question. Okay. Answer. It's a laboratory counter. Question. Okay. All right. So, so you get the pair of scissors and you're, um, and, um, 
you cut out that that stain out of the driver's uh, seat is that right answer yes question okay and how big is that stain answer it's probably the size of a thumbnail question okay which is half an inch I mean an inch answer quarter of an inch question quarter of an inch okay you cut that out what do you do with it answer I put that in a coin envelope and also label it with the case number the date and my initials and the item designation that I give it which in this case I believe it was a six question okay answer it was the sixth thing I took question so that now with that stain you don't take a swab of that stain right there answer no question when do you so what do you do with that envelope <clears throat> answer that's put on my work surface question okay answer it's folded over and sealed and put on my work surface question okay in the meantime you collected I assume four other stains answer correct question and those are all with q-tips answer yes they are question okay and those q-tips are stored in that same little answer yes question okay that's the same little stand q-tip drying stand or something answer yes question okay um and um and then what's the next next thing you do answer the next stain that I process question yes answer the next stain that I collected that I actually did DNA on was the stain that was right to the right of the ignition question okay and how do you get that stain answer again I collected that on a cotton swab question okay is that after you have done the presumptive test answer yes same process with each one of these each one of these stains I do a presumptive test first and then and then I do the actual collection of the sample question okay and how do you decide which ones you are I mean are you taking swabs that you intend to do DNA analysis answer yes question on from each one of these stains answer all of the stains that are on a hard surface like a dashboard or a metal part of the car we can't actually cut that metal out so the way to remove those stains is to use a cotton swab and actually take the stain off if it's a stain on a piece of fabric we don't it's much more efficient and we get more sample out of it when we cut the stain so all the stains that were collected from like cloth seats the stain was actually cut if it was a stain that was on a hard surface it was collected with a cotton swab question okay and but did you not analyze some of these stains later for DNA or did you analyze all of them answer no I didn't I only chose four to analyze question okay and how did you decide which four answer um, it was I basically just took a random sampling of some of the stains. As I said, Nick Stalky, one of the other analysts in the laboratory, is proficient in blood spatter under his direction. He said that some of the stains, stains appear to be possible drips. Those stains I collected for sure. And that's how I decided which ones to actually look at. Question, okay. So he, he basically told you which ones he thought looked like blood? Answer, right. Question, okay. Answer, not look like blood, but looked like they were drips of blood. The stain I collected, all the stains I collected, gave me a positive phenylthaline for blood and were consistent with the appearance of blood. Question, okay. Answer, I chose to do DNA on certain stains, the ones that appeared to be drip marks or that appeared to be isolated stains, not with the larger blood stain. I only did one of those. Question, okay. 
and the reason for that was because they appear to have dripped from the other stains? I guess I'm... Answer. Well, I, I mean they could have appeared to have dripped from anything, from someone that was injured, from an object, from a weapon, from anything. They just appear to be different. A lot of times when we process cars or any kind of evidence that's part of the process is to decide which stains may look different, which stains are separated from other stains, which stains might be give a little more probative evidence than the, for instance, in this case, the large stain in the back. I took that stain, but there were other smaller stains associated with that. I took that stain, but I didn't take, you know, four or five samples from that stain. I just took one sample from that stain. The other samples, perhaps, they were from another source of the blood. <coughs> so that's why we chose certain samples to take and certain ones not to examine. Question, okay, so the, and how long does this process take? Answer, to process a car? Question, right. Answer, my portion of it, it took me most of the day. Question, okay. Answer, and then someone else had to process it for fingerprints. You know, it depends on the vehicle. Sometimes they take a day. Sometimes it may be two or three days. It just depends. Question, and so there's a total of 10 stains that you get presumptive positive blood tests from? Answer, correct. And I think you said four of those you also swabbed for, with a swab, a cotton-like for DNA? Answer, all of them. All of those 10 I collected. Question, for DNA? Answer, right. Question, okay. Answer, with a swab. Question, okay. Answer, but I only chose to examine four of them. Question, four, okay. Answer, for DNA. Question, all right. And you go through the same process in each one. Answer, yes. And how many of them are drying, drying at the same time? Answer, well, I don't recall exactly, but as they are dry, I take them out and put them into the envelope as I, you know, as I go along. Question, okay, and how can you tell if they are dry? Do you like feel them? Answer, actually, I put them in the envelope and then I reopen them. I re reopen them at my desk and let them air dry. Question, okay. So they're not quite dry. You put them in the envelope. Answer, they weren't, I mean, they were put in the envelope. Then I took them up to my desk and I opened, the end of them was opened so the air could circulate. But there was never, but they were never taken out of the envelope again. Question, okay. When you do that, how are you carrying them up to your office? Attorney Kratz, objection, discovery, judge. This is well beyond the preliminary hearing. The court sustained. 